Hello friends, this is your Vips lab here. First of all, let me wish you an advanced Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year too if you are not going to watch my next video on the 28th of December. So, in this season of Christmas, I thought as a chemist uh, or as a chemistry enthusiast, it would be interesting if I would do something in chemistry a demonstration or a couple of demonstrations in chemistry on this Christmas day so this video is all about that I have done four demonstrations from chemistry for this season so enjoy the video once again Merry Christmas we begin this video with the reindeer toothpaste this is actually the elephant toothpaste experiment which I renamed because it is the season the materials required are Soap solution, potassium iodide, hydrogen peroxide and some food coloring. I have taken some liquid soap in this flask. Into that I am adding 30% hydrogen peroxide, approximately 5 ml. After adding the hydrogen peroxide, I will mix that well. So that liquid soap is agitated well with the hydrogen peroxide. Now this step is actually optional. I am using two drops of food coloring, red color. I am gently putting them on the side walls of the flask. Now add one molar potassium iodide into the flask and immediately observe the reaction. Potassium iodide aided in the catalytic oxidation of hydrogen peroxide releasing intense amount of heat and oxygen gas. This oxygen gas bubbled through the soap solution creating this massive froth. You can see the reaction of the oxidation of hydrogen peroxide. The next experiment is to create crystal globs and we will be using chemistry to make the crystals for this. The materials required are lead nitrate, potassium iodide and ammonium chloride. Here I have taken potassium iodide solution into which I have poured lead nitrate. You can immediately see the formation of the yellow precipitate of lead iodide. To see more about this experiment you can watch one of my previous video. Now we take this yellow precipitate and heat it in a water bath. On heating the solution, the precipitate gets dissolved giving a clear solution. Then on cooling, it will recrystallize out as golden yellow colored crystals which you can see in the video. Now we will be collecting this golden yellow crystals for our globe. Now we will be making another type of crystal. For this we will need ammonium chloride solid. I have taken ammonium chloride in this beaker and I will add a very little amount of distilled water into it to make a saturated solution. We will heat the solution so that the crystals will get dissolved and then we will keep the solution for cooling. Ammonium chloride is less soluble in cold water. So on cooling the solution the crystals start to separate and these crystals have beautiful snowflake like appearance. You can see in the video the crystals start to reappear as snowfall. We will be using these crystals to make our second crystal globe. I have set up two glass globes and I have put some decorative flowers on it. If you don't have such a glass globe, you can also use a glass container. 
Now I will be adding glycerin into this globs. The purpose of glycerin is that since it is a viscous liquid, the crystals will be floating in more evenly and more slowly and does not settle down much faster unlike in water. Now into the first crystal I have added the lead iodide crystals and into the second crystal block I am adding the crystallized ammonium chloride. I have set up a few decorative items which I have sticked into the inner surface of the lid for this crystal globes. If you are using a glass container, you can stick on these decorative things onto the inner surface of the lid of the jar and close the container tightly. Here I am using some glue to stick the lid onto the crystal globe. After letting it to air dry, our crystal globs are ready. Now just shake the crystal globe and observe the nice crystals which are floating around. On to the left side is my lead iodide and to the right side is the ammonium chloride crystal globe. Our next experiment is a magical bottle. For this we require manganese dioxide and hydrogen peroxide. First of all, take a small amount of manganese dioxide onto a piece of paper. You can easily obtain manganese dioxide from a battery. After putting the manganese dioxide onto the paper, we will be folding it nice and tight so that the powder does not come out of it. Now with the help of a string, tie the pack tightly. This pack is the one which we will be lowering into the container. This is the container in which we will be doing our experiment. Pour in about 10 ml of hydrogen peroxide. The more the concentration, the better will be the reaction. You know what I mean, right? Now we will place the filter paper into the flask. After keeping it just above the flask, fasten the lid. Now on taking the lid, the pack falls into the hydrogen peroxide and manganese dioxide starts to react with the hydrogen peroxide. You can see that manganese dioxide is reacting very vigorously with hydrogen peroxide and this reaction is highly exothermic and lot of fumes are being produced. Here also we see the catalytic oxidation of hydrogen peroxide releasing oxygen gas and lot of fumes. Since lot of fumes are rising from the bottle, this experiment is classically known as genie in a bottle experiment where the genie rose out when we opened the lid of the container. Now the last video will be the colorful fire. For this I have taken 4 salt the strontium, copper, barium and sodium salt into which I added some alcohol and lit them. On lighting this salt you can see that the strontium salt is giving a red color, the copper salt is giving a bluish green color and the barium salt is giving an apple green color and the sodium salt gives bright yellow color. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you loved the content of this video, do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell button. Happy Holidays! Merry Christmas!